Hello friends, today is August 15 and the world celebrates the birth of one of the greatest persons that ever lived. And in my opinion, the greatest of emperors in the history of mankind. Since here I share my favorite art masterpieces with you, today I'd like to share a painting that has been a passion of mine no less for many, many years. You can see it in Versailles, as well as in the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg, the, one, the city that once was the capital of the Russian Empire. The painting is called Napoleon on the Bridge at Arcole, painted by Antoine Jean Gros. The painting depicts two geniuses meeting in the prime of their youth. Napoleon, Napoleon is 27 and the artist is 25-26. The artist Gros studied painting under the, under the famous Jacques-Louis David and managed to go to Italy to study despite not receiving the Roman prize which was awarded back then to young talents in France. Italy at the time when he arrived was under Austrian control. In Milan, he drew caricatures of unelected Austrian governors. Nobody likes people who are not elected. When he heard of Bonaparte's accomplishments, he wanted to meet him. Josephine arranged a meeting in Milan and Gros showed Napoleon his drawings. Napoleon received him very kindly, looked at the drawings and said they were very good, and then asked what was that he wanted. Gros said that he wanted to create a painting that would have a grand theme as a foundation. Napoleon asked what that theme was, and Gros replied, the theme is you, I want to paint your portrait. Napoleon smiled and said, well then, so be it. Gros was asked if he could ride a horse and was given the rank of lieutenant and assigned to the headquarters as a painter. He would always be around Napoleon and he wore an aide-de-camp's armband. He found himself in the thick of the battle in Arcole. He was following Bonaparte, waiting for him to perform some great accomplishment to capture it. He walked under fire and into the fire. The painting is largely allegorical, but it was painted by someone who was right there at the moment, on the scene, under fire, and who went to Milan the day after the battle to paint the event on canvas. It is a very accurate portrait. The uniform here is a very well-painted uniform. It is also absolutely accurate. Not a single piece, not even a thread is made up here. It's the uniform of a Republican army general, the commander-in-chief. Now a few words about the battle itself. The Battle of Arcoli was one of the key battles in Napoleon's Italian campaign. Prior to the episode depicted in the painting, attempts to capture the bridge had repeatedly failed. Even divisional general, General de Division Augera, at one point grabbed the standard and shouted, Cowards, are you so afraid of death? Follow me, and led soldiers to the bridge. But they didn't follow him, and as a result, he reached the bridge with the standard in his hands almost alone, with a few officers and soldiers beside him, who were immediately killed, and he was left almost alone there. He then turned round and walked back. Interestingly, he was the only one who was not wounded. It became clear that the fate of the battle was being decided right here, right at the bridge. And if the bridge was not taken, it would mean that the attack on Arcoli was unsuccessful. Realizing this, Bonaparte understood that he had to do something extraordinary that would definitely lift the soldiers and give them strength. He rode straight to that bridge and later he wrote, I no longer had any generals. Their loyalty and bravery were unparalleled. Brigadier General, General de Brigadlan, arrived on the battlefield, still not having recovered from the wound he received in the previous battle. He was again wounded twice on the first day of the battle. At three o'clock in the afternoon, he lay suffering on a stretcher. When he learned that I personally was taking the lead of the column, he left his bed, mounted his horse, and returned to me. Since he could not stand on his feet from his wound, he was forced to remain on horseback at the Arcoli Bridge. He was shot again and fell unconscious. At this point, we know that Napoleon had arrived and declared that he was taking command. He never flinched, never blinked, never rattled. He jumped off his horse, drew his saber, took the standard, and rushed to the bridge under the hail of fire. Gro was there to capture the whole thing. Here we must be honest and say that, in the end, the attack on the bridge failed, 
and was not taken. But news of this inspired the army. Napoleon's presence gave strength to the weak, and they kept on fighting. Meanwhile, he ordered the detachment to cross the river at a different location and move towards Arcole along the other bank. This happened late in the evening. The battle continued to rage on in the city, and when the detachment had arrived, the Arcole had fallen. Napoleon's men were in awe. But the most important thing about this painting is that there is no other portrait like this in the world art where a person is depicted in the heat of passion as he becomes a legend. This is the most passionate entry into history on the artist's canvas. It has become some sort of a metaphor because Napoleon on the Arco Bridge is a metaphor for the transition from a simple general to an immortal legend. Cream of the crop, no less. After the Italian campaign, Napoleon becomes that hero in the metaphorical sense, yet he's so calm at this moment. Look at his face, it's almost pale. The blood was like ice underneath. He turns around looking to see if his men are following him. But in fact, he looks back not only at his men, he looks back at the whole world history. Yet his body is turned towards the future. Therefore, the uniqueness of this painting is also in its duality. He strives for the future, and at the same time, looks back at the people like Alexander the Great, Caesar, Charles the Great, who he knows here that he would have rivaled at their very best. It's the same what General Patton in his turn was talking about when he spoke of being there next to Napoleon in many of Napoleon's great battles. You know, George, you'd have made a great marshal for Napoleon if you lived in the 18th century. But I did, Sir Harold. I did. Thank you for watching. God bless you all.